Good morning and many blessings from your friendly neighborhood witch, wherever you guys may be listening to it and whatever time that you might possibly actually listening to this. It might be the day, it might be night. As you guys know, this is Reiku and this is my weekend detox. Sorry that I haven't been around, guys. It's been a rough couple of months. Ironically enough that I um, was going to have an episode planned out and then Road vs. Way got overturned and um, as a woman I kind of got into this state of paranoia and fear of what could possibly happen and I was going through some own personal things in my life that kind of made me make some changes in um, how I handled things and how I did some things. Um, ironically enough, I was able to uh, push through some ideas as well um, for some podcast episodes uh, for some ideas, but I haven't just put them out into the air because I did want to bring my uncle on full time. So more or less, this was kind of an update and to kind of address some stuff and some political ideas, because um, you know, guys, I try to keep my head out of political um, stress. Um, and I'm always a huge person on believing on pre uh, practicing what you preach. Um, I don't want to be hypocritical, especially since I always tell you guys that it's okay to not be okay and self-love is the best love and self-care is the best care. And it would have been a disservice to me to do any episodes uh, while my head wasn't in the most optimal position to give advice or to even speak upon the subject, especially when it comes to Road versus Wade. Um, uh, for a lot of people who are not aware that it is a huge thing for those who basically don't, you know, watch the news, keep up political stuff, Road versus Wade is a huge thing where basically they're taking away women's rights um, over their bodies. Um, and slowly but surely they are also trying to fight to um, eliminate or reverse back you know, gay marriages or AKA same sex marriage, as well as, um, in a, basically interracial marriage, uh, for those who, uh, want to date outside their race. Uh, they're trying slowly but surely in a lot of states to take away rights from, um, women as well as from African Americans as well, um, where they're basically trying to put us back in a state of segregation. Um, there's a lot of rules that are trying to get overturned and a lot of people are just really looking at the Roe versus Wade but not looking at all the other rules that are getting turned around. And again, like I said, I just typically try to stay away uh, from political stuff, but as a person who is pansexual, um, panromantic, and somebody who is demisexual. I've also dated outside my race on multiple occasions throughout my life. I've dated somebody. Um, my very first real boyfriend, if you guys remember, he was on one of the episodes before. Um, Kyle, he is um, white. And the thing is, it's like I still have a lot of love for him. And you never know, my life partner might actually be white. So it's just one of those things where like you're taking away the opportunity of ever me finding happiness with the person I'm destined to be happy with, where in some states it is still frowned upon it, in some states that we still go through it. Uh, but you guys know that we try to not shy away from certain topics when it comes down to this show. Uh, but we do want to talk about mental health and we want to focus on, you know, making sure that we stay grounded and we recognize self-love and needing self-care and things of that nature. Uh, so this this episode really doesn't have any direct subject that we're going to be hitting on. It's just more or less to kind of keep you guys up to date on what's going on and what's been going on and why I have um, kind of been taking my time away from focusing on this. Um, I did not stop focusing on other projects. Um, it's just been kind of hard to want to get on the mic and talk to you guys on a uh, political standpoint when a lot of stuff is going down the drain or talk to you about mental health when a lot of stuff is like draining on me as a woman um african-american woman in america and um on top of everything else with a lot of the the traveling going up uh for those who don't know my full-time job is i do catch flights not fillings um and if you have to figure that out i'm sorry i'm not gonna dive that into that a little bit more 
Um, I do catch flights and fillings, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I, I travel a lot for my, my main job and then trying to keep up with this and the time frame of putting it up on a Friday. It's been kind of hard, especially since, you know, it's been a little crazy when it comes to days I have available. Um, but it is one of those things where I want to go ahead and at least give you guys kind of a heads up of what direction I want to be taking um, in the next couple of episodes. So again, this is just a update episode uh, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of feedback of what I have planned. So it's not like I've completely um, abandoned my podcast. It's not like I've completely forgot about it. It's not like I haven't completely thought about it um, because even on my time off, I've been coming up with episodes um, for Father's Day, I wanted to do, and I'm still going to do, it's just not going to be for Father's Day now, um, an episode with my uncle where we will talk about, um, men today and dating, single fatherhood, uh, joint custody, how has that been for, um, him? I've also asked a couple of my, uh, full-time single fathers, how do they feel about being, um, in a relationship and trying to bring their children around and how do they feel about dating. I've also, um, did interview my, my father, uh, when it comes down to, uh, bringing in blended households. So somebody with a prior relationship and a child from a prior relationship into a, um, a new relationship as well. Um, and then I can tell you guys my experience as a woman, dating, uh, not having children of my own that are living, um, and my experience dating my ex. Yeah, I know you guys are tired of hearing about that, but he did have children and it was one of those situations where you guys remember when I said, if I'm at that point in my life, if I start dating someone, it's going to be somebody with kids. Um, I could talk about the experience that I've had about meeting, um, their children, uh, you know, and, uh, at a, what I thought was not a very appropriate time, and how you have to kind of time that out and when is the appropriate time of meeting someone's kids, especially um, when it comes down to that. So the next episode for Father's, well, that was supposed to be for Father's Day, is going to be more or less talking about uh, dating um, with children and also um, are you typically the man that you, you want your your child to date, um, whether your child is a girl dating a guy or vice, uh, a, a son dating another guy. Um, it's just one of those things that we wanted to dive into because you want to be what your, your children want to date. So we're not going to just focus on men. We will also talk about ourselves. I personally feel as though that if I had a son or a daughter, I would want them to date somebody like me, uh, with the mindset that I have, um, when it comes down to dating, when it comes down to, um, situations and I want to make sure that they have that those values that I have which is a, a, a little bit of old school with traditional um, it's kind of hard to blend the two but it's something that is if it's done right it can be done right um, so we're gonna be talking about that in the episode um, I've also talked about um, if you guys are not aware that I have talked about possibly doing a solo pregnancy on my social media um, because I'm at that point where I with my endometriosis, because I have talked about my condition before, that I have considered at this point getting a full hysterectomy by the time I'm 35 years old. Um, and I, I, I'm planning on possibly doing a solo pregnancy uh, between now and then uh, before I give the full hysterectomy if the pain continues to get progressively worse. And I was, I ran across the idea talking to one of my friends saying, hey, because I'm not really dating no one, what about the idea of going on one of these dating apps and finding a potential donor? Like, I don't want to date you. I just want to have a child. That way I don't have to pay with all the other costs that comes with, you know, getting sperm because you got to have to pay for that if you guys are not aware. Um, we go into a sperm bank and having to select somebody and you can just kind of go that go directly to the source and so i was asking some of my guy friends like hey um would you be willing to donate sperm to any of your female friends if they ask just by saying hey i want a kid but i don't really necessarily need you to be a part of the child's life um so i did ask that question to a couple of my guys including my uncle um and he's like i have a subject on that so that might be an episode as well um because i'm still it's still a goal of mine to have a solo pregnancy um 
I mean, don't get me wrong, if I can find a partner before then, that would be great, fantastic. Um, but idealistically, that is still one of my goals. That is not going to stop. That was my goal before my ex. Um, and that is still my goal. Like, it's been my goal for several years now. Um, I can also dive into what made me consider doing the solo pregnancy in that episode as well. And then there is an episode that I want to do pertaining to... Uh, us diving into this new world order basically with uh you know the the pandemic and you know covid and now monkeypox and how is that making a lot of people feel um it's making a lot of us become paranoid um because we're living in this world where now a lot of people are becoming a lot more paranoid and we're expected to go back into society and uh be okay and uh, a lot of us who were already introverts are becoming even more reclusive um where we're just kind of like not wanting to leave our house unfortunately my job requires me to leave a lot um so how is that have the effect on me um and everything else like that so it's been kind of it's been kind of hard uh when it comes down to it and it's making it hard to want to date in this kind of this industry like don't get me wrong i'm still for dating and everything else like that um so i try not to think too much into it and that was going to be well that's still going to be an episode i'm sorry guys i can't gotta keep saying it's that that was but it is going to be an episode because these are things that are um in the making and what we're going to do um and then we're going to talk about well i'm going to talk about it by myself it's just going to be a solo episode for me on this one but this episode is um do we have like a comfort or a go-to when it comes to our down moments um and are we sitting here and just kind of a mental health check in for those that probably might be the next episode and the first episode coming back is just kind of a mental health check um checking in on you guys kind of like okay are you guys good what are you guys doing to do better what are you guys doing to feel better are you guys you know like calling up and watching one of your comfort shows because i know me um don't judge me but i typically have a go-to video game to play and i have a go-to show um when i'm really down there's this old show from the early 90s i think it was early 90s don't quote me um but it's called the critic and if you are a 90s baby like me there was a show that competed with you know the simpsons for a good minute with this guy who was basically criticizing um he was criticizing basically movies and he, he on his show he would be like little spoofs and stuff and the reason why i'm i'm still kind of like big on it is because it was one of the shows that i remember watching with my dad and it just kind of remember it kind of gives me like this feeling of nostalgia um plus you know old school wwe because he really wanted a son and then my brother came and that that changed but <laughs> ultimately um the critic is like my go-to like i have it on my laptop and i have it on like devices that i can randomly watch whenever i'm just feeling really really down and i i watch it like once every once every two months it's really weird don't judge me um i also have like episodes of certain shows that i like to like dive back into um but i also have uh, for my mom like when i'm missing my mom i have a teddy bear um ironically that i got from my period um like my very first cycle my mom was like here you go you're a woman now and she gave me a teddy bear and i still have her and her name is despair um anybody who knows me knows about this damn bear you're like damn you still have it i'm like yep still have it since i was nine years old and i'm in my 30s now and the bear looks like she's brand new because I i've taken care of all my stuffed animals um but it's just one of those things but it would just be kind of like a mental health check-in for those people and just kind of check in and make sure you guys are good um and just kind of go from there uh but there will be some slight changes when it comes down to Reiku's um sunday detox uh, weekend detox i'm sorry i gotta remember that we did change the name for the season and we're gonna keep it that way because we do film it on a friday and it just happens to post on sunday for all the other social media platforms so when it comes down to it there is going to be some changes i am going to essentially kind of semi have a co-host on certain episodes or most of the episodes i am still going to be taking in for um people to come in and um do their thing 
and be like, hey, this is an episode I really think you'd be good on uh, politically. Let's talk about it. Let's go. Um, so that is going to be something that's going to be a change when it comes to the uh, weekend detox is that there will be a, a not a full-time co-host but a part-time co-host and we'll be starting to make more episodes again um we'll also be at the point where um i will probably do more audio which is be whatever be more convenient based off of my schedule um coming up so it might be more audio versus um actual video unfortunately guys it's just based off of what i can do when i can do it how i can do it um we might not always have live episodes only because of my schedule and trying to get things linked up and do things the way that i need to and depends on what location i'm at i may not be able to record um and have you guys live and i'm so 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 sorry about that um, but i i always want to be very transparent with you guys but my full-time job is going to be um more important and it's just how i pay for this podcast and the equipment for it um i am planning to build a patreon uh for this particular um, podcast. So that's going to be there. Um, it is going to have a mixture of a lot of other stuff, including uh, my book release, because my book is at that point where we're at the final stages of editing. And I'm so freaking happy. Excuse my language again. And well, then again, you guys know I don't have no censor. Uh, where this this book is going to finally get out. I don't know exactly the date. I can't give you guys a date. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to keep up with my social medias at this point. Um, I got so antsy on waiting on my book to finish at get editing that me and a friend did a virtual open mic, which we're going to start doing that once a month as well. And the virtual open mic is a literally it's an audio thing. Nobody has to show their face and you guys know I have stage fright. Um, I just only don't have a problem here at the podcast because I've been doing it for since 2019. Sheesh. And then we'll kind of keep up with there. With the Patreon, though, it's going to be a little bit different. The Patreon will give you access uh, to exclusive stuff. Potentially, um, I may put something up there with you get a signed autographed poetry book. Um, you may get updates uh, before everyone else do, um, as well as you might have a free uh, subscription or a free month subscription to my Twitch when I play video games because I still game from time to time. Um, you may get a signed one of my old uh, modeling pay like you know pictures uh, signed and printed and mailed to you with a personal letter or possibly with a book copy um, I'm working out the ideas for the patreon I have a couple things that I might possibly do um, that we might have there I know that one of my friends is trying to get it to be in um, not safe for work after dark um, tier as well uh, but honestly I am probably going to nix that part of my life because of my job i like my job way too much and some of y'all are company snitches and don't like to, uh, to see people be successful um i prefer to keep my 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 career because i like it um but i also love my podcast and i love that and i don't want to ruin the reputation especially if um with me going to school to be a psychiatrist to make this more an official um you know me giving advice and helping people out with their mental health i had to eliminate certain parts because people won't take it serious I, I i really want you guys to take it serious and understand that i take it serious i'm here for this like when i tell people i create a safe space i'm not saying it just to talk out of my ass i literally am creating a safe space for people um even with uh the open mic that we did we created a safe space for poets and writers who have never showcased their work to network with other writers and poets and give them an opportunity to showcase it because they haven't had a real platform to do so. So when I say I create safe spaces, I mean that because I wanted a safe space in a lot of things that I did. My poetry got my ass whooped a lot because my mom thought it was real stuff that was going on, um, my diary entries and stuff like that. So it was just one of those things where that's why I created these safe spaces for you to be able to be yourself, speak your mind about your mental health, and, and even, you know, just see seek out others that are exactly like you trying to figure it out. And somebody may have the resources that another person may not have. Um, the reason for this podcast is for it to, get, to shed light on, you know, different things that are in the world. Um, so...
that's one of those things that I keep up with. Um, another thing that I also want to probably do is I do want to have an episode on kinks. I am going to bring uh, Zeb on. If you guys remember from season one and two of the podcast, Zeb was here uh, about a lot of the poly relationships, um, but I am going to bring him on for a couple episodes involving uh, the poly slash kink community coming in together. Um, and I might just dive into an episode about my dating life since, you know, my divorce and my dating life since, um, you know, my last breakup since my divorce, you know, it's just little things that we can just do that will be a little bit more there. But with the Patreon, it is going to be um, a little bit more exclusive. All the funds for the Patreon is going to fuel uh, for the podcast itself. Um, it's not going to go towards anything but the podcast, despite it having something to do with my my poetry and everything else. It is mainly just to fund that because it's getting expensive for me to come out of pocket. And I know a lot of people would like to support it and be there and support other than just share it on social media. Uh, this will give you an opportunity to get a little bit more uh, for me to get more people to come on here um, and build this to be a bigger um, safe space for a lot of other people than just uh, me talking. And then I can be able to um, possibly get this off the ground a little bit more. And that's that's a big goal for me. So this episode really is just an update episode to kind of give you guys a heads up like, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, I didn't want it to be less than 25 minutes. It might be a little less. I might try to figure out something else, but for the most part, I do have other episodes coming. Um, I have about five. I only talked about two of them, um, but I'm coming up with more. I do have a virtual open mic that will come up every, you know, every month. You do need to be following my Twitter um, or my Instagram to be doing so. That's model underscore Lady Reiku um, for my Instagram. For my Twitter is B underscore R E I K O. Uh, for Twitter, don't mind that sometimes my Twitter is BS posts as well. You just kind of have to ex understand that I am horrible at managing my social medias. It is just me again. I literally will see something and share it. And if I have too many pages, I might mess up and might post it on multiple things. I might create one just for the podcast. We'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow. Um, and possibly also with the Patreon, it will be more of an in-depth of get to know the, uh, the, the host um, thing when it comes down to the Patreon. But we're going to get some stuff together. Don't worry about it. Uh, with Twitch, I'm still doing that when I can. Um... You just have to follow Twitch on there. That is uh, Lady Reiku, and that would be uh, with an E instead, a three instead of an E on uh, Twitch. Um, for the most part, I do try to keep it linked in somewhere so you guys can be able to see it. But this is just, like I said, an, an update episode. I hope to see you guys on future episodes. Just kind of keep up with uh, Twitter. If I have an episode coming, I will let you guys know. Twitter will probably be the first one to know about a new episode uh, compared to all the other ones. You can also follow up with past episodes on Podbean as well as Spotify. Um, that it would be Reiku's week, Sunday Detox on Spotify and Podbean and Reiku's Weekend Detox on YouTube um, for the video ones if you guys would like to see video versus seeing audio. Like I said, this one is just an audio update. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in for this episode or this update episode and you guys kind of know the motto. It's okay to not be okay. Self-love is the best love and I hope that you guys do well um, out there. Um, also, we might have a sponsor. Um, this is just one of my friends who been there for me and she makes really cool jewelry. If you've ever seen some of my pieces that I've had in some recent um, work, um, she also does like tarot card readings. Um, her Instagram handle is, um, give me a second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, Stella, where's your stuff at? I am horrible at keeping up with that. Um, that dot witch dot Stella is her um, regular page. She does a lot of stuff on um, tarot card reading. She makes 
a lot of gemstones and stuff like that. She also helps out with spells and things of that nature. Um, she also does a lot of stuff for her other uh, page, which I think it's Stone Dragon, but don't quote me on that right now because I can't find her page, her other page. It's like crazy. Um, yeah, the Stone Dragon creation. Jesus, I don't know why in the world I couldn't find that for like two minutes of my life. Um, sorry, Stone Dragon Crafts. Don't quote me. But yeah, she uh, makes candles. She does uh, spells. She helps with tarot card readings. Um, and she also does ruins as well as pendulums. If you have any questions, she's actually very pretty accurate. Um, I trust her other than my own readings she's kind of the person i go to to be like hey so i did a reading i didn't like how it came out because my cards are shit um can you do a reading for me and she confirms or denies whether my reading was good um because i do do tarot card readings from time to time and i also sell bath salts during the holidays um spell bath salts but uh just remember guys um support your friends that's the best thing to do right now i do want to go ahead and let you guys know I care about you guys. I appreciate you guys for still being here. Have a safe and wonderful week, weekend, whenever you're listening to this. Have a beautiful day. Just remember these moments are temporary and I will see you guys on the next episode. Just keep a lookout and be notified.